of anxieties or worries or concerns you might have about moving into primary one because I know sometimes for the parents it's a wee bit more stressful than it is actually for the children and people have got lots of questions that they're wanting answered. If there's anything that you want to stop me and ask, feel free, put up your hand, go for it. If not, I'm happy to take questions at the end as well. Oh, and just to say, Aisha will be filming me this afternoon. I just have to get my hair on to hold up for that. Um, not delighted about that, but if you know of anybody who didn't, wasn't able to meet along today, it will be going on the school website. Either that or you find me so interesting that you want to listen to me again, because I'm good bedtime listening, then you can go onto the school website and see it. So the children will start on Wednesday the 17th of August, the Monday and the Tuesday of that week being in service days for the teachers only. Now the first week will be half days and that will be up to 12.35. The second week we're doing something a little bit different here at Lumpen Inn, so where the full days for the children will start on the Thursday and the Friday. Now there are other schools where they will continue to be half days on that second week. The reason that we're going to fill these on the first day and Friday as Mrs Davidson and myself have used that approach at Doula before and it works really well. The full days for primary ones can be tiring, can be challenging, they can find them a little bit tricky where they're ready to nod off in the afternoon or you take them home and they're shattered and they want to go to bed. The benefit of taking them full days on the first day and the Friday is it gives them an opportunity to get used to what a full day is like but it also gives them the weekend to be able to recover before they come back in on the Monday. Because sometimes children seem to think once they've done a couple of full days, they're all good there and they're just ready to go back to nursery. So it's just getting them ready and into that routine. The children will line up at the bottom door. There are two entrances into the school. Most of the upper school children line up near where the office is and the younger children will line up down near where the nursery is. On that first couple of days, Miss Ferguson and myself will be out prior to nine o'clock just to help you understand where the children are lining up, to alleviate any anxieties, any issues like that. What I would say is some children find moving into primary one fairly tricky. Sometimes we have the occasion of tear, there have been full-blown tantrums, we've seen it all, we've been able to deal with it. What I would ask is, and I know it's difficult for you, is if something like that does happen, the quicker you leave, the easier it is. It's a bit like ripping off a plaster, and I appreciate that is tricky, but nine times out of ten, when that happens, we're able to get the child settled and on track. If we couldn't, we would phone you and we would let you know. On the first day, there will be a soft start, which means that for about the first 30 or 40 minutes, you're welcome to come into the classroom with the children. We'll have it set up with activities for you to get engaged with the children with and just help settle them down and ease them into it. After that time, Miss Ferguson will let you know when it's a time for all the parents to, to leave. Some parents or some children just want to go in by themselves. I've had that before where a little girl says, no mum, I'm good to go now, off you go. Um, but that will be for, for you to work out. Each child will have a peg and a tray to store their belongings. Now we are aware at this age they might not be able to read their name. So there will be a little picture that goes with that, maybe a lion or an elephant or something like that. And on that soft start, it's often quite good to go with the child to their tray, to their peg, familiarise the child with it and then you're able to talk with them. So that's that first step in them being able to organise themselves independently. There's also the end of the day of routine. The children will exit, leaving the same door that they came in in the morning. Now, the teacher will hand the children out. We'll obviously make sure that there's an adult there to collect them. What we won't do is let the children go off by themselves. So we'll say to the children in the class, if there's not an adult there for you, come back and stand by the teacher and then we'll take care of it from there because we know that there can be some issues around children wandering off or perhaps there's only certain people that you want the child to go for. So we have quite a strict routine with that. Other important information, the school day runs from 9 o'clock to 3.05 with lunchtime being at 12.35. So for your first week of half days, you will pick the children up at 12.35. If you're taking them home for lunch on a full day, the day starts again at 1.25 to the, to the 3.05. Now, our lunch sittings, the youngest children will always go for lunch first. That means that the dinner hall is that little bit quieter. And Miss Ferguson, myself, and some of the other members of the leadership team, we will be there to help them as well, whether it be with carrying trays, fork and knife issues, all the, the different challenges that the dinner hall presents. I know, I'm not sure if you're aware that from primaries one to P3 now, children qualify for a preschool meal. There have been some shifts in the in the school meal that will be changing after the summer holidays. 
We used to provide a hot and a cold option. The authority has decided to change that slightly and it will now be a hot option only. We've got some menus that we'll be able to give out so you can take those away with you. But from my experience, it's often beneficial to talk with the children about what's for lunch that day and what the, what's coming up, just in case they need something that they don't like. That's maybe a day you want to send them in with a packed lunch or something like that. And that way they can prepare themselves. There's a tuck shop. So at break time, if children would like to bring some money, if, they, if you're not giving them a snack and you want them to purchase a snack, there's crisps and cereal bars and all that kind of thing that they can get. We would ask that children, children come to school with a gym kit because they'll, they will try, if possible, to make sure that children get their 100 minutes of entitlement to PE in a week, and that goes along with the Scottish Executive um, Guidelines. So some gym, gym shoes, the plum sole type for the indoor hall, so they're not marking, and shorts and t-shirts. Homework and reading will go home regularly in primary one, so we'll think about homework and probably go home once a week. Reading and sounds and phonics, probably more so. We keep it small and we keep it manageable, but those will go backwards and forwards. So just in case your child forgets to tell you, it's maybe worth just checking in their bag to see what they have. We'll have opportunities for shared learning quite frequently. So that's where we open up the classroom and you come in and you get involved with the children and participate in a learning. A learning experience but what we'll also do throughout primary one is it will provide some parent workshops um, for you guys so you can come and see what approaches we're using to learning and you can see how we're working with the children labeling clothes please please could you label absolutely everything if it's not labeled it's very different difficult to get it back to you and children have this tendency just to shed their clothes left right and center and when we're trying to reunite children with said clothes it can be a little bit challenging I have had children lose their underwear in the past. Don't ask me how that happened. I'm not sure if you want to go as far as perhaps labelling that, but if you could label as much as possible, that would be really helpful. The primary ones will be buddied up with children from P5 and P6. So they're going to have a familiar face in the playground. And for the first couple of weeks, their primary five, six buddies will be with them in the front playground. Primary ones don't get to go round the back. They stay in the front part where they can be kept an eye on by the adults. They'll have that wee familiar friend and that will be something that we build up and they'll do lots of work in class with their buddies and things as well so that they know they have an older boy or girl to go to should they need them but they'll also have ladies working in the playground to resolve and to help them with any issues, skin knees, fallings out, all those kind of things. Now we take an active approach to learning particularly in the early years and really we're in the business of trying to create children that have got a lifelong love of learning. We want to make learning fun, we want to get them hooked in and we want to get them engaged. So we try and make it as fun and as enjoyable as possible. And what we know is that research tells us is that children in very early stages learn best through play. So we'll be building on those great foundations put in place by the nursery. So they might come home from primary one and you say, well, what did you learn today? And they'll be like, oh, I just played. I can assure you they are learning, but we're just reaching them through very structured play and we will have clear learning intentions for them. We'll really try to hook them in and really get them excited. So you might hear stories of dragons visiting the classroom after they've gone home to sleep or little girls called Katie Morag leaving them letters in the classroom. And it's all done just to hook them in and get them really excited. And lots of the time they don't actually know that they're engaging in learning, they just seem to think it's a lot of fun. We'll also work on problem solving approaches so as well and that's trying to get them to build up that resilience if they don't get the right answer first time that that's okay so having another attempt persevering with tasks and we'll also work with the children to think about actually understanding rather than just remembering you know what it's like yourself when you're trying to remember everything and then your brain reaches saturation point so we'll be looking with them particularly in numeracy to really get that really good deep understanding and then be able to move on. Our more formal learning, so that's things like reading and phonics and letter writing and signs, really need your support at home. So like I say, we will keep the homework manageable, but it will go backwards and forwards. And the more that you can do with that at home, the better chance your child has of being successful. But we'll also, even in the very early stages at nursery and in primary one, we focus on skills for work. So things like working in a team, sharing materials, reporting back, creating plans. These are all skills that you would take into the workforce. And we're thinking 10, 15, 20 years ahead about that we're trying to produce a skilled workforce to put out there. So that will be the focus of our learning as well.